Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And as you saw there just a moment ago, we are on another road trip to pick up a new project vehicle and I'm sitting in it as we speak. So what have we got? Well, it's a 2009 Discovery 3 commercial manual and um, it's got a few issues which uh, I'm aware about uh, and a few more that I've uh, noticed since I've uh, been driving the vehicle. Just to make this clear, so basically the vehicle was sold to me via eBay and it was described as having a fault with the injector pump. Um, it was throwing up codes and uh, basically under load the vehicle was going into limp mode. So what we're going to try and do is we are going to try and fix that on the side of the road. I pulled into a car park, Home Bargains car park, hope they don't mind, um, and I'm going to try the secret trick again. Uh, we have got our three Forte products like we had on the Defender. So I've got the all fortifier because the engine's done 140,000 miles. I've got a turbo cleaner, which uh, I'm going to put into the tank. And I've got some specialist injector cleaner, which I'm actually going to add to the fuel filter that I bought to replace. Now, I bought myself a couple of spare parts that may miraculously fix the problem or at least get us home um, because I don't really want to be driving a couple of hours in limp mode. So uh, basically I've got myself a genuine or, um, fuel filter which we're going to fit now uh, and I've also got a, an intercooler pipe which uh, they report, they're, they're known for splitting so I thought I've got a genuine one of those so I can fit that as well. I don't know how much I'm going to get away with in this car park. I do have RAC cover so this video is going to come out regardless of whether we make it or not. I've driven the vehicle literally one mile. So I've got in the vehicle. It's very basic inside. Obviously, it's a GS uh, spec vehicle being the commercial. I don't mind that because in my mind, the, the fewer things uh, to go wrong, the better. The handbrake seems to work. I'm going to try the suspension now. So in order to do the uh, fuel filter, it's basically sort of underneath my feet uh, in the driver's side or on the right hand side. Um, I have to put the vehicle into hyper extended mode and then it's literally three uh, 10 mil bolts to remove a plate and then I should be able to unscrew the fuel filter. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but let's quickly try now and start her up and see if we can get the suspension going. Okay, that, that feels good. Um, passenger door doesn't work or can't open it, the window works but I can't open the door so there's power going to it but for some reason it won't unlock right so let's see if we can raise this okay that that is going up I'm not sure if I'm going to get away with removing the fuel filter in this car park so we've only got an eighth of a tank of fuel so what I've done is I've tried to concentrate that Forte product into the tank as best as possible. So I've actually, um, I've actually put the turbo cleaner and the injector cleaner straight into the tank. So that is going to pull through and I'm just going to try and sit here for a bit at idle, let the uh, vehicle get up to temperature, um, get it to sort of process some of that chemical and I've actually got Carly uh, connected now this is not sponsored by Carly I, I bought Carly a while ago for my uh, Volvo uh, and I've used it on my Audi as well uh, both of which are gone now so um, I'm hoping that it's going to work on this now it's come up with 50% 55% of systems checked so far 11 issues found vehicle status is very bad can you see that uh, we need to do something about that this is the list of problems you can see those quite a few and all this time i'm still running the engine with that injector and that turbo cleaner in there so that should be doing something the other issue we've got is it's pouring with rain um, and i've obviously got to get under the vehicle still got a chest infection so i don't want to make myself properly ill but you know be that as, as it may we'll have to just uh, get over that i think if i have a mcdonald's first that will get me ready for uh, doing some work on the vehicle. So you'd like to see me eat. Oh, gherkin. Rough. 
So the story behind this project is I actually bought this from eBay, but it was listed by a company, uh, a drilling company, and they were disposing of a couple of vehicles. Uh, I've had a look at the second vehicle today, actually, which is an automatic HSE with all the seats inside, but obviously it's got a flat uh, board in there to try and sort of be usable as a commercial. Um, they've got that for sale. That was even cheaper than this one because it had a problem with the uh, gearbox slipping being an auto. Um, by the by, I've had a look. I might, yeah, if this gets me home safe, I'm going to buy that one as well because uh, it's got the better lights, it's got the seats, uh, I can swap everything into this. Um, but yeah, so I bought it on eBay and I rang the company. I did a, I know you're not supposed to, but I thought I'll contact the company and see if they want to sell it to me outside of eBay. And to their credit, uh, they, they were willing to entertain an offer, which I made, um, of 1600 I think it was. And then they said no. So I upped my offer to 1800 and they still said no. Uh, they said no, they'll, they'll let the, the auction continue, um, which they did. And then uh, I won it at 1550 So it worked out well for me. Uh, not so well for them, but at the end of the day, that's the, the risk you take. Um, so yeah, for 1550 I've got myself a running, driving Discovery 3. That doesn't mean a lot because obviously it might shit its pants at any minute. I don't know. Um, is, it, is it better than I thought? And... It's better in some ways, but worse in others. I think that's the fair thing to say. I mean, it drives at the moment, touch wood, really nice. I mean, it's pulling, I'm not putting any load under it, but it's just cruising. The suspension is great. I mean, obviously they are known for being incredibly comfortable. So I've pulled over now and put 30 quid's worth of fuel in there. Um, Good news and bad news, so the fuel filter, which I thought could well be an issue on the vehicle. Uh, good news is, well, is this bad news? The bad news is the one on it looks brand new. Uh, I've also seen this little injector pump uh, solenoid under there as well, it looks brand new. So someone has tried to fix this car already. Now, I have got another genuine filter. I don't think this is going to make any difference, but I've got it. I might as well fit it. So I um, tried to release the air out of the bleed nipple, but there's nothing there. Mm, we're not starting now. It's got to pull fuel through. Right, started. Good. So, we'll hit the road and hopefully we'll have an update soon. Just had a limp mode come on. So, I was going up a steep hill. I'm trying to keep the revs under 2,000. Um, and uh, just went a bit above that. The load, obviously, when I'm trying to go up the hill. And it wasn't happening. It went into limp mode. Uh, got all the lights flashing in a way so I just quickly turned it off and on again it's cleared it so we're back to normal now but I can't continue to do that really so just gonna I'm gonna do a little bit more uh, miles wise and then we'll see if we can just get some of that injector cleaner through try and give the engine a chance to get clean somewhat and if we can then it might improve if not it's gonna be flatbed recovery unfortunately well <laughs> didn't make it too far I'm afraid um, I've got all sorts of flashing lights that's what we've got is that the three amigos I wonder something to do with the suspension look Suspension lowered. System fault special programs not available. Oh wow, it's really shit itself. So, can't do that. Can't do that. I do like the fact that I've got flashing lights and there's a big one on the back. Well, a small one on the back. That's pretty cool. Got to be worth 1500 quid at least. Okay, so we have called for rescue from the RAC. It's a real shame, if I'm honest. Uh, I genuinely had hope that we'd be able to sort it, but I've obviously had the same idea as the last person who looked at the vehicle, changed the fuel filter, see if that makes might be blocked. 
because quite often these fuel filters don't get changed ever in the servicing if you're not get it done by a dealership even then I, I don't know if it'd be done but basically that was what i'd hoped i hoped that it had the original fuel filter on there and replacing it would solve the problem it hasn't um on the plus side we do now have an opening passenger door which is great um and the time now is 3.38. Quick update for you. Uh, the time is quarter past seven. Uh, the RAC did turn up. To be fair, bless him, he didn't really know what he was doing. He did scan it. Um, came up with a load of codes. He was able to clear those codes. Um, and the main one that seems to be causing the problem is the VIN not coded to the ECM um, and we think that's why it's going to sort of like shutdown mode or or you know is it a security feature is it we don't know <clears throat> I'm sure you don't need an update but I'm bored so you can have one anyway it's nine o'clock uh, spoke to the RAC again and they have said they will definitely be here within half an hour this is what it's come to folks there she is, poor old girl. Now, although the vehicle didn't go into limp mode this morning, um, I'm not convinced the problem solved. And I did notice there's quite a bit of smoke coming out the back under um, acceleration. So we are going to go ahead and fit this uh, down pipe, this intercooler pipe, or this intake pipe. Um, it's quite an easy job. Well, I haven't done it yet, so I'm hoping it's an easy job. It's just simply two Jubilee clips. The one at the top's fairly simple. So I think this is definitely a job most of you guys could tackle yourselves. Um, and it is a job that probably needs, I say doing, but certainly needs inspecting. And you know, for the small amount of time it takes, um, it'd be worth having a go yourselves. Right, so we've got the centers of the clips out. So that should now pull off. There we go. Quite a bit of dirt under there, look. So if I take you in here, this is where we've removed the uh, plastic guard. And there is the bottom of our hose. She's off at the bottom. And now we just need to do the same at the top. Yeah, that's pretty simple. Okay, now by the looks of things, that is not a genuine Land Rover hose, but it doesn't look split. This genuine Land Rover one has got the actual Jubilee clips fixed on, clipped on, which is nice because that means that they don't drop sort of as you're locating it really couldn't be an easier job could it let's be honest that goes on there nice and easy there we go i would say i am liking our new jack and axle sand setup those are quite handy the way they just lift up on their own Super easy. There we go. Right, now I've just done that run and it instantly went into HTC mode and all the suspension dropped. So Barry from Rugged 4x4 here in Liverpool has just uh, put his OBD reader on there, uh, snap-on tool, and it's basically said that the steering angle sensor was way out, it was at minus 13, and it should be like between minus 2 and 0. Um, that's a potential fix, but we will only know when he comes back. It looks like suspension is still up.
it's still up. Well guys, we are a few days after that last clip you saw of Barry from Rugged 4 before uh, doing some diagnostic work on the vehicle that seemed to work at the time. So what was he doing? Well, we had our suspicions that there might be a problem with the steering angle sensor. And I've actually been in the footwell and had a little play around. I did notice the collar on the sensor had actually was actually loose. So I clicked it back into position, but I think what's happened in the past, well, we know, um, it had knocked the sensor out. So it was actually reading minus 13, um, and it should be like naught to plus or minus two. Um, and what that meant was the vehicle constantly thought you were going around a corner. So if you were going any speed, it would try and adapt. It was just getting super confused about what was going on. So it would basically shut down and put the, the suspension in, in access mode so you, you couldn't do anything specific with it. Now we recalibrated the steering and I'm pleased to say that it did work um, then but I'm even more pleased to say that it's still working. This vehicle's uh, suspension problem is solved. Um, I've had three or four days driving it constantly. It's been performing really well. So that has definitely sorted out our suspension problems. It, we're not getting any of those uh, codes anymore, but I'm also pleased to say that we've actually managed to rectify the whole powertrain issue as well. So we always knew that there was a chance that by changing the fuel filter, that intake pipe, and putting a good dose of Forte injector and turbo cleaner in there, that would sort the injector problem out. Because sometimes if you've got a low pressure injection warning, it doesn't mean that the pressure, the pump's faulty. Um, it can mean that there's just, there's things that are clogged up. So the whole system needed to be flushed through. And uh, I'm just really pleased to say it's just worked a treat. So whatever we did, that combination has worked. So we've now got full power. We don't have the smoke that we had originally. We had some black smoke coming out the back because of the filth in there. So as far as performance goes, I've had 70 out of it. No problem on the motorway. It pulls really strong. Um, the only issue we have now is it's slightly light and the tracking's off a little bit. So that needs to be addressed. Um, I think we're going to go for some new tyres. So I might wait until we've got the tyres. We'll get all the wheels balanced. We'll get the tracking done. And then she should be good to go. Now, it does raise one last problem we've got at the moment and that is the condition of the interior so the interior is rough um, there's no question about it it's a working vehicle that's what it was bought for that's what it did that's fine but we want to change that and try and breathe some new civilian life into this old workhorse so one of the jobs that uh, I thought was worth doing uh, regardless was replacing the gas struts on both the bonnet because they were completely shot and the tailgate because uh, one issue we were having with the tailgate was when you actually press the release button, there wasn't enough pressure from these, I think, to even get it to start to come out. And sometimes it would open, but not fully open. <clears throat> so we're gonna replace these. These are the original ones because they've still got the Land Rover on them. Now, to get these off, you've just got this circlip around here that traps the ball on the tailgate. So you have to pop that open and get a little pick in there like that. And that will then pull off. I'll have to just hold this with my head. There's one on the inside as well. There we go. There we go. And you can tell already that these have got more to them because it's just lifted up even higher. There we go, that's one. Ta-da! Now what I have noticed is all of the window tinting um, has actually failed. You can just see in here, look, it's completely uh, just bubbled up and flaking off. Now that might be a good thing because it means I can remove it more easily um, or it might just make life really hard. Um, but that's my next goal. So I have actually cleaned the interior, believe it or not. And if you see from these pictures, that is it clean. So at the end of the day, um, that is something we want to do. So our priority moving forward is going to be removing that window tint, try and get the glass um, clean and, and see through. And what I did notice is this panel here on both sides has actually got some vinyl. I'm going to try and remove it on camera. There's a lot of glue on there, so that's probably not the best idea, but and what I'm really hoping, and I don't know if this is going to be the case, but I really, really hope that the windows, sorry, that the doors have still got, 
how satisfying is that? So what I'm hoping is the doors have still got the regulators in. They did two different versions. They did one version which had a bracket um, that held up the window, but because I've got the switch and everything in place, they did do some with um, the regulators in it. Because this is an 09, this is the last one they did, I'm really hoping it's got the regulator in. So that's gonna be something we're gonna be addressing next. But we are breathing new life into this Discovery. And I know it's something different to the Defender, but that's two project vehicles we've got now. So there should be something for everybody. So if you did enjoy the video, please do give me a thumbs up. Uh, please do subscribe because I think that will help the channel massively and we can get loads more content to you. So um, we'll keep working on this one and we'll keep working on the Defender. We've got loads more coming out in the next few days. So thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.